Hi, I'm Lorena and I'm going to show you how I can find an ebook in the WSU Libraries catalog and how I can read it on screen online, how I can download it to my desktop or laptop and read it late, later at my leisure without an internet connection, and also how I can download it and read it on a, an external device such as a Nook or a smartphone or a tablet. So I'm going to go ahead and start by doing a search and my search is going to be voting not a good search you know I'm just using this as an example probably I'd want to narrow it down a little bit once I've done my search in order to narrow it down just to ebooks I'm going to go under format and I'm going to narrow it down to ebooks that simple now not everything here is going to be the kind of ebook I'm talking about some of these are going to be items that are freely available online anyone can use them in PDF form or HTML form what I'm going to be showing you here are examples that require you to use special software in order to download them and this our very first one is a good example so I look at this and this looks pretty good I decide I want it and it's available as an ebook that might make it easier for me to cut and paste and skim and do some searching and you can see that I have it from a couple of different collections I want you to go ahead and ignore the one that says net library that's kind of an artifact of the way we used to have this instead I'm going to go and choose the one over here that says EBSCO ebook collection so let's go ahead and click on that once I've clicked on it, you'll see that it gives me a couple of options. I can read it full text on screen or I can download it. Let's go to ebook full text first. And what this will allow me to do is actually read my book online. And that's convenient because I'm right here, but sometimes, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can actually read it. We're looking just at the cover right now. Let's look at all of our chapters. We'll go over here and look at the table of contents. And you'll see this is a PDF, and I have PDF tools for saving or printing or doing other things. Since my specific tools are going to be over here in the right-hand margin. I can search inside. I can bookmark, and I can annotate. So I can take notes, then I can capture those notes later on. I can look books up in a dictionary. I can print some things out. I can save this. I can do all sorts of things. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go go ahead and download it. I'm from Arizona, so let's go look at the Arizona page. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've looked at it, I've decided it looks interesting, but I want to read it later. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download this ebook. And once I do, you'll see that I'm being prompted to sign in. So let's go ahead and see what happens. What I need to do is I need to sign in with my EBSCO account. And I have one of those, but if I didn't, you'll see I'd be able to create one right here. It's actually really valuable to have an EBSCO account. Most of our databases allow you to create accounts, and you can do all sorts of cool things with them. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now that I'm logged in, you'll see I have some options. I can choose how long I want to check this out for. So I only want to check this out for a day, so it'll be available tomorrow, but I have more options. The reason I'm, I'm going to do this is because once I check it out, it's like a regular book. Nobody else can check it out until I return it. So I'm going to go ahead and say one day, and then I'll click on check out, check out and download. Notice, by the way, that the format is a PDF. That doesn't mean a regular sort of PDF, though, the kind that I can just open up with Adobe Reader. You'll see that I have to have a program called Adobe Digital Editions on my computer, my desktop, or my laptop in order to actually read this. And this is something that I would have to download if, it, if I did not already have it. And there's a little bit more information here about what that means which we're not going to read right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Check Out and Download, and you can see it was checked out. And I have a little folder here. Now I'm using the Chrome browser, so my little uh, my link is here, but if I were using a different browser, it would probably be on my desktop, or my downloads folder, or wherever my downloads tend to go. So what I'm going to do is, in order to actually open this up, I'm going to click on this link. I'm going to choose to open it. And when I open it, it's opening inside Adobe Digital Editions, which is this program that I have installed. And you can see all the other ebooks that I've downloaded and looked at. It's taking a few minutes for it to download. While we're waiting for it to download, let's take a look at these. These are books that I've checked out over time. And you'll notice that um, they all have kind of uh, date added, last read, etc. And some of these are kind of old. These are long past my checkout period. And while they're sitting on my computer, I won't actually have access to these. So I should probably go ahead and delete them. Let's see. But uh, I don't think I can do that while it's downloading. That's just too much going on. So I probably should do that, though, because it's a little bit untidy having these take up space on my computer when I can't read them. And that's part of that digital rights management 
that is the reason why you have to read it inside Adobe Editions. That means that you can only have it for a certain period of time and also means that the book can't be pirated. So we're going to go ahead and download it and it's almost done and in just a second it's going to be done and it'll open up. There it is. State legislative elections. Here we are and right now I'm just looking at the title page but I can go back over here to Arizona and I can do a number of things to make this a little bit easier for me to read. I can bump up the font style, I can um, I can print something out, I can create a bookmark so I can go back to it later, I can take notes, I can do all sorts of things. Um, for, let's, see, let's go try custom fit right now. See that makes it a little bit easier for me to read and I can make it bigger if I want. And I have a number of options here for expanding the table of contents, making information available. Okay, what I'm going to do though is I'm not going to spend a lot of time on actually looking at this in Adobe Digital Editions because I've got another little screencast on that. I'm going to go back to my library view, which is a view of all of the things that I've had. And we've seen how I can read it on screen when I've actually found it in the database. We've seen now how I can download it and read it, at least for a couple of days, or one day in my case, on my desktop top or laptop, now you're going to see how I can move this to an external device. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm moving it over to a Nook, which is an e-reader. Now this e-reader is something that already that is I have that I have made so that I can read uh, Adobe Digital Editions files on this, and I'll have another screencast on that. So we're just going to say I have Adobe Digital Editions on this Nook. I've authorized it with my Adobe account, and I have my Nook plugged into my desktop right now, and you can see it shows up here. So in order to actually move this book from my desktop to my little e-reader, so I can read it at my leisure, all I do is I highlight it and drag it over here into my Nook. And that's going to copy the file on. And now that it's going to be on my little e-reader, I can read it on my e-reader. But again, let's take a look inside our e-reader. You can see I've got a number of things here. And here's my little book here. So, And it's telling me, actually, that um, I only have it for 24 hours. And you can see here's another book that I downloaded that expired a long, long time ago. So it would be that simple. Once it's on my Nook, I'm not going to have quite as much functionality or as easy functionality uh, with regards to cutting, copying, making notes, etc. It's a little bit clunkier, but I can do it. So what I would tend to do is if I just want to read it, or take notes on a piece of paper, I'll probably download it to my Nook. But if I'm really seriously using this for scholarly work and I want to capture quotations, do printing, um, save a lot of things, then I'm probably going to want to either just read it on screen online when I found it or else download it and read it here in Adobe Digital Editions. When I'm finished, by the way, I will no longer have access to this. My, my expiration period, let's go back to our little bookshelves here. My expiration period will be gone, and you can see these are all expired. And I can go ahead and delete these so they don't take up as much space by clicking on Delete Item. You'll notice there's also item information here, and that will actually give me some general information about what I can and can't do with this particular document, including my, my uh, checkout period. So this is how you can actually download an ebook from screen to actually read it on your computer or on a digital device such as a Nook or a smartphone or a tablet, but not a Kindle. Kindles do not work with um, Adobe Digital Editions. They have a separate system, so you cannot read these sorts of, of, of books on Kindles. And um, please, if you have questions about any of this, um, send me an email. My information is on the ebooks page. And I have more screencasts like this one that tell you more and more about using ebooks at the WSU libraries.